run through some quick announcements. We've got the meeting today, today tomorrow, 1230. Uh, 1230, potato bar, and then the meeting. Then next Sunday is the program. Yes, well, that's the one I wanted to talk about to see if we want to do it next Sunday or if we want to wait and do it Christmas Eve. So I don't. Uh, we won't be here. Okay, well, then I guess it's next Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Settle that one. Settle that one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they go spend Christmas Eve down in Buck. So. Okay. Uh, speaking of Christmas Eve, 7 p.m. will be the service. So we'll have the heat up. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows what it's going to be? It could be 80, it could be 20. Yeah. Well, it's going to be you'll find out this week what 80 and 20 feel like in the same week. So oh. you have the beautiful snow, but it's not rusted. Oh. Uh, that's my, that's my prediction. That's your prediction. Well, it's going to happen next week. Yeah, we're supposed to get snow next weekend. How much? How much? Yes. No. If you want that much, you need to go back where I grew up. Yeah. They got that much the other night. Yeah. Yeah. And they're so happy up there. Yeah. So if it doesn't snow, then we don't get the satisfaction of kicking the snowball off the tires. Oh. It's so satisfying. so satisfying? That gives you joy. Yeah. Well, you gotta tap first to see if it's solid. If it's not solid, then you can get it. Oh. <laughs> Any other announcements? School's done Friday. I'm in the process of passing a card around in case anybody wants to write a personal note to Jeremy and Tim. That's Wednesday at 5 and then Tim. What happened? Billy passed away again. Oh my gosh. She was leaving at that. Oh. We have a visitation on Wednesday night at 5 to 7 at Williams. Oh, exactly. It's I do think we have to do something. You and you. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. We have two birthdays this week. Mama. Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Thursday and Friday. 38 and 35. Are you guys coming with us? Yes. 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 Growing up, she always thought I was 35. She finally made it. Maybe I should have made the announcement earlier. But they were asking. We went to uh, Thank you. Last night. And it was a live activity just one night. And it was fantastic. Uh, the boys got to see the live sheep with the shepherds and the kids. And the guys and men were fantastic. I, I wasn't quite, I asked Terry if we could go to the gym. We had to wait for hours in the back of the bed. Oh, there are many. Well, but anyway, I hope the day was Jesus. I would hope they would not keep a infant uh, out there that long. But church, uh, tours. Uh, I wish all of them would. Mm -hmm. And all oh, the of them would. I only got to see Woods. It was absolutely so impressive. <laughs> I can't even describe it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, I'm done with that. All right, so let's sing happy birthday to the birthday children. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday. Happy birthday to you. Number two more. There are days. Like Alright, if there's nothing else, Lincoln, Samantha.
Let's all stand and recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now. Chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. 
The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear. Zion, do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and a reproach for you. At that time I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Quentin? Lucas? sister had more presents than he did. He wasn't very happy. So he ran to his mother and he goes, Katie has more presents under the tree than I drew. And he was crying. So his mom had to explain to him about Christmas. What is Christmas really about? Christ. Hmm? Christ. Christ. Jesus. Jesus, that's right. It's really about the present that God gave us. Jesus, isn't it? Have you ever felt like that? Other people having more presents than you? You ever felt kind of... Mm, it happens. 
Yeah, but usually if you have lower presence, you always have Oh, smaller number meant better. But counting the presents, did that make you a little sad that you didn't have as many? Christmas isn't all about presents, it's all about Jesus and Christ. Very good. I want you to remember that in 13 days. <laughs> Your mom and dad, your mom, your mommy, and your daddy, they really didn't like Christmas too much. You know why? Because their birthdays. their birthdays were like the week before Christmas, and they felt cheated. Because they didn't understand what the real reason was, did they, Nick? No, they just had double time. Yeah. yeah. They didn't understand that the reason was Jesus. But Christmas should be a happy time, right? It's a time to, to think about Jesus being born and, and what he did for us. And the fact that that is the best gift that we can ever get. But they have a secret group chat still saying, hey, we've got more presents this year. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about John the Baptist a little bit. And, yes. Never count presents. Mm-hmm. I know better than that. <laughs> I know better than that. But John the Baptist was, was out telling people about this joy, and they all wanted to know what they should do. And John told them, he said, if you have two coats, give a coat to someone who doesn't have one. Or if you have a lot of food, Give that food to someone who doesn't have one. And that will give you the joy. And that will make God happy. And that was what Jesus wants us to do. So the message is, if you want to have real joy in your heart, it's not about how many presents you guys get. But it's about what you do to other people and how you treat them. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, help us to learn that through remembering Jesus' birth, that true joy comes from giving to others. And true joy is in your heart when we help all who are around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Very good, boys. Let's turn to hymn number 249. There's a song in the air.
Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Alright, does anybody have anything they wish to share from the heart of the family? This is the week of joy. Joy is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember, this is week three. Christmas is getting closer and closer every day, isn't it? The parties are starting. We went to the, the pastor's party the other night. Had a wonderful time. The Christmas parties are starting and presents are getting bought. And the trees are getting decorated in some places. <laughs> it's a festive time, isn't it? To some, it is. Our reading today is from Luke 3. It starts out a little not so festive. John kind of gives the people a little problem. Luke 3, verses 7 through 18. And John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowd asked. And John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you're required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, do not extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, his one-way fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to him. To them, May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. It's kind of a harsh thing to talk about on the, the Sunday of joy, isn't it? John sitting there and, and calling this, these people brood of vipers and telling them or asking them why they think they're not going to be saved and why they're doing what they're doing. But they're coming to him and they want to know what to do. They want to know how they can be saved. So John tells them pretty much the same thing that Jesus will be telling them shortly. those who don't have any food. What does that do when we do those things though, right? That brings joy to us. Anytime we help somebody, we feel joy in our hearts, don't we? And when we have joy in our hearts, God has joy in his heart. Now this is the Sunday of joy, the third Sunday in the four weeks of Advent. The, the Sunday where you're, you're thinking about Okay, I've got to go to Walmart, be around all them hundreds of people pushing and wanting. 
the same things I want. I was watching the news this morning. They were talking about all the toys that, the most popular toys and how you can't find them anymore. And then you've got all this preparation. Tamara spent yesterday baking, I don't know how many hundreds of cookies she ended up with yesterday. And, you know, this cleaning, and this all this prep work and all the parties you got to go through. And, and it's hard to understand how there can be joy in your hearts when you're so stressed about all that's going on. But to me, all you have to do is look at the kids. Look at their faces. That anticipation of, of course, presence. Not knowing completely what the reason for the season is, but just that anticipation, that joy of it's Christmas time. All you have to do is look at those faces. That makes you happy, doesn't it? They're sitting there knowing that, as they said, in 13 days, they're going to start getting these presents. In five days, they're going to be off school for two weeks. There may be snow. It's Christmas time. It's December. There may be snow. They may get to go out playing in the snow. And, and that is stuff that we can remember as kids gave us a lot of joy and happiness, didn't it? But John, in our reading, he's kind of taking the joy out of things, it sounds like. But if there's one person who knows the joy of Jesus, it's John. Let's take a look at the first time we hear about John. It's in Luke 1, 43 and 44. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. That baby was John. As soon as the words of Mary were spoken in front of him, he leapt for joy even before he was born. Joy was in his heart. And he wants that joy for everybody. He wants everybody to feel the same thing he felt for the very first time he heard Mary's voice. So, he's telling them what they need to do. He's telling them to have joy in their hearts like he does. They need to give. They need to not think about themselves, but to think of others. Now, John spends a lot of time in, in the wilderness speaking the words of Isaiah. And there's a, there's a song in Isaiah 12, 2 to 6. It says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord Himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim His name. Make known among the nations what He has done and proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for He has done glorious things. Let this be known to the world. Shout aloud and sing of joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Sing aloud, sing of joy. Great is the Son of Man, the Son of God, who is walking among us. John is trying to get these people to change their ways to join in that joy of Jesus. Now, before there's joy, what is there? A lot of times there is bad news, and that's how John starts with that bad news. Come on, guys. You know, get it together. And then they wanted to know, well, what do we have to do to get that joy? And it says the people waited expectantly. Just like the kids wait expectantly for Christmas morning and all those presents. They wanted to know what they need to do for that good news, for that joy. They wanted to know about the joy of home. So they stayed and listened. And they listened and were baptized. And the joy was beginning to build in them. We talk about going home and how... We expect 
we get expectingly, we get uh, anticipation, and you know, you get that feeling in you, and then you get that fear in you. But but when you get there, there's that joy. You come across people who you grew up with, who were through you through the ups and downs, and, and even though that fear might be there, but that joy overtakes that fear, doesn't it? We have fear of going to God's home. But we know that when we get there, the joy that will be there, the joy of being reunited with those people from our past, to praise God, to sing to God, and to have that joy for all eternity. Zephaniah was all about that. He was all about singing praise and joy. He says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but we will rejoice over you with singing. God is with us each and every day. And when we get home, he will rejoice over us. He will be standing there with open arms, glad to see us, glad to have us in that eternal Garden of Eden, that eternal paradise. Even Isaiah talks about it. He says, Sing to the Lord, for He has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Going home is a joyous and glorious feeling. Christmas is a joyous and glorious occasion. Christmas is a time to think of joy, of what Christ is bringing to us. And if we forget that, it's a time to look at the kids. To look at the anticipation and the joy in their faces as they look at the presents. All of those presents they're going to get. But the joy of thinking of what that greatest present is. And they said it. They said that greatest present is Jesus. And Jesus brings eternal life. And that's going to be the most awesome present of all. To be able to spend eternal life with God in joy, in peace. And that's all we want. That's all God wants is that everybody spend eternity with Him. He gave us this present. He gave us His Son to show us that path. And all we have to do is accept Him and follow Him along that path. To accept the Holy Spirit. To accept that ultimate gift that only God can give us. <coughs> but what else gives us joy? What can we do while we're here? If someone doesn't have one, let them have our coat. If we have extra food, and someone doesn't have any food, let them have our food. That gives us joy, it gives them joy, and it gives God joy. <coughs> the joy of home. It's time to think about going home. It's time for us to put our mind right and to think of the gifts that God has given us and the gifts that we can give others. Even in the times like we've had the last couple of years where, where things have been upside down, there can be joy in our hearts and we can give that joy to others so that we can all have a joyous time at home. Let's pray. Oh, loving Father, you give us so much joy each and every day. And the joy we have in our hearts because of the ultimate present that you gave us. Your Son who, who forged a path for us to go straight to heaven. To be with you in peace, love, and joy for all eternity. Lord, we thank you for that blessing. And Lord, we pray for all of those who do not yet know that blessing. 
that we can go and show them the joy in our hearts so that they can have the joy in their hearts as well. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to hymn number 234, O Come All Ye Faithful. And we're only going to sing the first four verses. I want to sing in the German version here.
me keep my gray and sun in our prayer, so hopefully things will come out good for him and his family ordeal. Our neighbor, Pam Smith, of course, her mom just died a couple weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving, and uh, now she's been diagnosed with COVID, although she's been locked up in her house for two years straight now. But she somehow got it, and she's not in the best of health already. So. Mm -hmm. We had a joy. My baby boy lost his first tooth. Oh, so what, what's the uh, concern? Where did they go? Where did they go? Yeah. yeah, where did they go? We don't know. Oh, uh, we know where he, he says it's in his tummy. <laughs> Hopefully not still, but... <laughs> How did you do that? Did you just... Yeah, yeah. You should check it out. You should check it out. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> no, I'm okay. That's how we got the Quentin's tooth back. Nope. So <laughs> A little late now. He's yeah, got a couple of days. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, bow our heads for some silent prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for the joy that you give us each and every day. And we thank you for the blessing of your Son who came to save us from ourselves and from our sins. Lord, we have a heavy heart this week. Be with Tim and Geraldine and the family. as they mourn the loss of Billy. Comfort them and help them through this trying time. And be with his wife and children as they forge on without their father and their husband. Lord, we ask that you be with Judy and her son as he battles cancer. And we pray for a healing touch. And Lord, we pray for all those victims of the storms the other night, the tornadoes that ripped through many states. And we pray for the families of the those who lost their lives, we pray for their comfort. We pray for those who are still missing, that they can be found alive. And we pray for all the first responders who are working to help all those in need right now. Lord, we lift up Don and his surgery. And even though it's the second time for this surgery and he's not concerned, Lord, we just pray and lift him up to you that all will go well. Lord, we lift up Levi and his family and we just ask you comfort and understanding come across all of them. We pray for Doug and that he's not here and we hope that all is well and he can make it back to us. Reading the loss of her mother and now he's dealing with COVID herself. Heal her and comfort her. And Lord, we have many, many concerns on our hearts and we lift them all up to you. But we do have some joys. The joy of 
growing, where we lose our first tooth. And the joy of this season. We do pray for all those who don't feel that joy right now, Lord. We lift them up to you and we ask that your Holy Spirit enter into their hearts so that they can feel the joy and love that only comes from you. Father, we pray all these things, all these things that we spoke out loud and all those that are still in our hearts. We lift up the concerns to you that only you can handle. And we give you all praise and glory for the joys in our life. And we do this as we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and join our hands and hearts as we sing about the joy of Jesus in our lives.